The dares carried out on Who Dares Wins are performed under strict safety supervision. Do not attempt to copy them. Mike Whitney and welcome to Who Dares Wins, the show where we could dare you to do something you never thought you could, should or would do. Now, tonight's our last show for the year and we're going to keep you on edge right to the finish. Could you ride the surf without being wiped out? Would you run a wall 12 storeys up? And how about a bird's eye view from the highest flagpole in the southern hemisphere? But first, we're going to dare someone to talk non-stop for 30 seconds without saying um or ah, making a mistake, repeating themselves, whatever. If we can do that, we'll give them $50. But we've tried this dare once before, and no one could talk for 30 seconds without making a blur. Let's see if we're lucky today. What are we going to do? You're going to talk for 30 seconds without saying um, ah, repeating yourself, having a long pause, breaking out in hysterical laughter, gibbering, whatever. I couldn't even put a sentence together. One sentence, I couldn't do it. You've done all right then. That's a no way. Nah, nah. How much is the bag? $19.94. All right, I've got a dare that'll pay for that and pay for your lunch. What I want you to do is talk for 30 seconds without saying um, ah, uh, repeating yourself, having a real long pause. And if you can do that, I'll give you 50 bucks. Oh, I'll give it a go. I yeah. knew you would. Yeah. What's your name, darling? Joanna. Joanna. All right, Joanna. Where you go? I like to buy this bag. I haven't got any money and I like my lunch. So I thought I'd do the there, and I'll see you looking at $50. <laughs> Ten seconds. Beep. Well done. Lovely to have you on the show. Nice to meet you. See you, darling. Yeah. I'm an inspector at Mitsubishi. I drive all the cars. We test them. And they do. Um... <laughs> Gong. Yeah. Once I went to Spain, and then I bought a car, and then I did some shopping and went home and ran around the corner, found a... Gong. <laughs> you watch the show? <laughs> Other things to no, do. Come here, this no, is no, right no, up your alley. It's right up your alley. Fifty dollars if you can talk for thirty seconds yeah. non-stop without saying um ah, repeat yourself, <laughs> having a big pause in there, whatever. Thirty seconds. It's Here we go. Ready? Go. Don't start yet. Right. Right, ready to go. Okay, ready, go. Yeah, what I would like to say is this that the program is very, very good, very, very inspiring, but it's nothing I could really take part in. If I was a bit younger and had a little bit more stamina and my hair was thicker and longer and not so white, I would love it. I would really like it. I hope that you're really enjoying talking to me. I can see by your face that you're terribly interested in everything that I say. Have, have I got to 30 seconds yet? Tell me if I've got 30 seconds yet. 30 seconds. <laughs> There was nothing to do with the show. I'm too old, my hair's going thin. Did you make this or what? <laughs> Man of applause. Tony's a legend. Well done, Silver. You didn't think you could do it, but you've proved that you're a serious motor mouth. OK, now standing a colossal 75 metres straight up, the tallest flagpole in the Southern Hemisphere is located here in Sydney's Darling Harbour. And we want someone to climb it. And the person that we're going to dare to get dizzy is Stephen Clearahan. 23-year-old Stephen's a material handler from St Andrews in New South Wales. He's just become a dad, and his fiancée Cassandra wrote to us with a big, big gripe. We're getting married soon. Um, and he's been telling everybody that marrying me is the biggest risk of his life. Ooh, how yeah. did that go down? <laughs> I was just like, excuse me. <laughs> he's a dirty, yeah. rotten scoundrel, isn't he? <laughs> he's really heard you, hasn't he? he has Teach him a lesson. <laughs> All right. Nasty boy. Stephen's just parked in the car park. Stephen. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, <laughs> oh mate. Mike Whitney, who dares win? How you doing? Did you say that getting married's the biggest area of your life? Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, kid. <laughs> Well, you've been nominated to come on the show. All right, come on, let's go. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> Just one way of to everybody before you go. This could be the end, mate. <laughs>
In the middle of Darling Harbour, standing at 75 metres, is the Southern Hemisphere's tallest flagpole. For Stephen Clearahan, the biggest dare is walking down the aisle. Hello, Stephen. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Uh, well, Tanya's just yeah, about to change his way of thinking. Oh, yeah. Stephen, look over your shoulder. See that flagpole in the middle of the water? Oh, yeah. Guess where you're going to be? <laughs> right at the top. You bet you are. Your dare is to climb up that flagpole all the way to the top, 260 feet. Physically, it's a killer of a climb. Oh, jeez. <laughs> then you've got to come all the way back down again. Yeah. It's going to take you a while to climb yeah. up. <laughs> what do you think of that? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> when I get a closer look, I'll sort of... We'll go over and have a closer look at right. it. Come on, then. <laughs> Steve, you're going to be in for one big shock should you decide to go ahead with this dare. As you get closer to that yeah. mast, you'll see how high it really is. Then. And the climb is going to be very tough and very physical. It's a lot different from here, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. It's all over the place as well. It is, too. The flagpole gets very narrow towards the top, so that's when it starts to bend, and that's when the ladder's moving, too. Come over here, climb with your hands on the outside, and just climb and climb and climb and climb. And that's about as far as I'm going. The rest is over to you. It's going to be windy as anything up there. Take your time with the climb if you're going to do it. Think about it for a couple of seconds. We're going to put a harness on you so that if you should fall, you are on a belay line. You won't drop to the ground because you're going to be swinging around the flagpole just like a flag. Our riggers have got hold of you. They can either lower you down if you're tired or get you back onto the ladder to climb down. Bear in mind that if you do go through with this, once you get to the top, you've then got to climb down to complete the dare. Stephen, make sure you consider this carefully because, mate, you're going to be in for one hell of a climb. I don't know about this one. If you decide to go ahead with the dare. Now, while Stephen thinks about taking on that mighty flagpole, we're looking for someone to run over ramparts. It's 71 metres from the ground of the Grace Hotel to its roof, and Tanya's got a dare that's right on the edge. We're 12 storeys high. The ledge is only this wide. Would you dare to walk from one end and back again in under a minute, jumping over all the obstacles? For $100, let's see who I can find. Oh, no, <laughs> Sorry. No way. <laughs> no, I'm right. Thanks, no anyway. takers. I don't know. I skydive, but I don't know if I can walk on a ledge. I think I'll pass. Come here, let me dare you. Well, no, what kind of dare oh, is come it? Here. We've got a 12-storey ledge, and I'm looking for someone to come out and walk it. Get over it, Tanya. Get over it. <laughs> Get over it. How are you with heights? What, heights? Heights, like, we're talking 12 storeys up. Yeah? And I'm looking for someone to walk a ledge. How wide is the ledge? About that wide. But on the ledge, there are all these obstacles. So you've, to... so you've got to walk over them and around them. So if you can walk the ledge there and back in one minute without falling, I'll give you $100. I'm at work at the moment. Could we ring your boss and perhaps persuade them? Is that your boss? Yes. Is it OK if I steal her for about 45 minutes to walk a ledge? That's all right? We've got the thumbs up. Thank you. What's your name? Margo. Margo, let's go and see this ledge. This is the ledge, so you can see the plenty for your foot to go on. Yeah. Have a look down. I don't know how much you can see, but... <laughs> I wouldn't like to make the bottom. You will be wearing a safety harness, so we'd like you to go all the way to the other end mm -hmm. and back again in a minute. OK. That's about all I have to tell you, so if you would like to do it... <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. Great. OK, Margot. Right to go up? Yeah. OK. Careful. How's that? Are you set? I'm ready. All right, go. And Margot's away, and she's travelling fast. Steady on. 71 metres up, and one minute to complete the dare. Don't slip. Come on, Margot. That's it. Good girl. Take a look at that drop. One wrong step, Margot, and you'll be hanging over the edge like a rag doll. Way to go, Margot. 29. You're looking good. You're looking good. Hey, halfway. That's a girl, that's a girl. Don't fall. Margot's got nerves of steel. She's galloping over the ramparts with no concern for her safety. 15 seconds left. You're looking good. You're looking and she's good. on the home stretch. Now, this is what you call nifty footwork. It's hard and it's scary, 
but nothing's gonna stop us. Oh, with five seconds to spare, she's done it. <laughs> way to go, girl. Oh, yes. There is no way you were looking down. No, nah, no, I wasn't. On the way back, you were powering. Have a look at that. It goes to prove that it's always the quiet ones that take the money away. 55 seconds, she did it with five seconds to spare. $100, thanks for coming out and doing that. Thank you. I'm off the hook again. After the break, we'll be giving you even more cheap. When the surf gets wild, the only guys who can get out the back are the guys in the surf boats. It's tough on the boats, it's tougher on the crews. So would you join them? Row out with the boys, 100 metres, round the buoy and back into the beach in the clothes you got on. $100. Oh, Suits worth more than that. Fully clothed. Fully clothed. Yeah. I don't think so. Phil and brother, how are you? I'm good. Thank not you. not fit, not well, not very fit, very healthy. I'm gonna stay that way. Got to row out over the wave, and the sweeps back there, calling the shots. The out the back, round the buoy, back in, mm -hmm. in the clothes you got on. I'll do that. Yep. Gabby, this is Cliff. Hello, Gabby. And this this is this is Darren. This is Gabby's boyfriend. Hello, Hello Darren. Darren. Now, Cliff's the sweep, and he controls the boat from up the back and steers it and yells out the strokes. So listen very carefully. I'm listening. All right, Gabby, just hop in there. That's your seat. You put your feet in there. Keep your arms reasonably straight. Push back with your legs. Push your legs back. After a very basic lesson in rowing, it was time for Gabrielle and the guys to launch the boat. Time to pull up the speedos and jump into the hot seat. Here we go. Gabrielle's sitting in the bow, which will make sure she has the bumpiest ride possible. Oh. She'll ride up into the air and crash back down hard as that 26-footer passes over each wave. Oh. She's taken some king-size hits out there, but she's hanging on. And the big one. Oh, no. Gutsy effort. Oh, I'm quite surprised she didn't jump ship then. She's gone through half a dozen fairly decent waves then. They'll, they'll hang out there until the sweep sees a wave coming from behind and then they'll try and row onto the wave. They're just hooking up a swirl. Uh, they're still rowing in. No, not on them. Up you get, Gabrielle. Yeah, the boys from the South Maruba Surf Life Saving Club are the best in the business and there's no way they're going to let you off lightly. Put in with the rest of the team. Oh, they're on. Now, rowing a surf life-saving boat they're is on. hard yakka, and it's dangerous, too. Because if you fall out, you run the risk of being smacked by the boat or one of the oars. Look at my jaw. Hey, what about going out? You landed flat on your back. Yeah, I did. I had the oar sticking the wrong way, and it caught me, and I went back. Well done, mate. It was great, Mate, unbelievable. Oh, unbelievable. Before you go, the deal was for 100 bucks. Thanks very much. Oh, mate. It's all right. Thank you. Well, lucky you held on tight, Gabrielle. But if you had a fallen in the drink, no problem. Plenty of lifesavers around to drag you out and save your life. OK, it's back to our main dare and Stephen Clearahan, who's plucking up the courage to power up that monster pole. Darling Harbour. And this is the view from the tallest flagpole in the Southern Hemisphere. And we've dared Stephen Clearahan to climb 75 metres to the very top. It's in your hands. I mean, you know what you're capable of doing. Uh, I'll give it a go. You will? I'll give it a go. Steve, I'm going to go and watch it from the other side. Much better view out of your way. OK. All right? Now, while Good Steve luck. was psyching himself up for the dare, we brought in his girlfriend, Cassandra. Hi. Remember, Hi. she's still got no idea what she's got him into. Right there? Yeah, <laughs> very tight. Yeah. Oh. Kaz, oh, I just saw the look on your face. Then you were like, oh, oh my God. Can you see the yeah. man in the lovely yeah. orange oak? <laughs> Guess who that is? Yes. Your fiance. He's looking really impressed with the minute. We'll have a chat to him in a second. All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> you kind of got a grasp on it now, haven't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you there, Stephen? Oh. I'm going to put Cass on, and uh, please feel free to tell her what you're about to do. Hey, darling. Um, I think I'm going to die. What? It's about 250 feet high. I've got to climb the thing. This is the largest flagpole in the Southern Hemisphere. Oh, my God. Stephen is about to climb it all the way to the top. Are you OK? Oh, I'm not doing too bad now, but when I start climbing, I think my legs are going to 
<laughs> probably all over the place. Blake knows it's you on the intercom. He's trying to grab it. You're a very kid for me. Okay. Are you sure you want to go through with it, babe? <laughs> I'm here now. I might as well give it a shot. <laughs> you don't have to. I'll give it a try. Now that I've actually seen it, I don't think you should do it. Uh, I'll give it a go. Good luck, babe. Thanks. He's just about to start the climb up. It's going to take a fair bit of physical strength to get up there. It will, actually. If he falls, mm -hmm. he's on a line where he's going to swing around a bit and then we can lower him down. Mm -hmm. For the dare, though, he has to get to the top yeah. and then climb all the way back down again. Oh, yeah. Make sure this doesn't get jammed as you go up. OK? Yeah, it's up to you. When you're ready, Stephen, start your climb. It's all in your thighs, too. Climb as much with your thighs as you can, all right? Just remember to take your time, too, because if you rush the start of it, you, there's no way you're going to get to the top. You'll be too exhausted. No problem. Steve, this is going to be a very long, hard climb. Make sure you pace yourself, mate. And you know that if you've had enough at any time, you just let me know and we'll get you back down. No worries. OK. This was Stephen <laughs> Clearahan earlier. Look at him now. He's accepted our dare to climb the tallest flagpole in the Southern Hemisphere. Hate me yet? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna pop it. Right about this time, Stephen's arms and his thighs are hurting. You're not wrong there. <laughs> and we can see him clinging onto the ladder every few rungs to have a break. He's still got halfway to go. You sure you still want to do it, Stephen? Yeah, I'm not gonna turn down now. You don't have to. It's just as far up as it is down. I guess, but it's swaying more at the top, that's all. It's all right. Keep going, this flagpole keep going. has been designed to move with the wind. That's getting windy. That makes me feel sick. At the top, Hang that on. pole is going to be swaying up to half a metre yeah, by it's the just way. Waving all over the place. Oh my, my god. My arms and legs just feel like they're going to drop off. Do you want to come down? Nah, keep going. He's not giving up. If the height proves too much for Steve and he freezes, one of our safety team will have to climb up and talk him down. I haven't got much farther to go. Oh, God, that's freaky. Just look how bad it's swaying. Oh, God, Danny's coming down soon. You're nearly there. You need a little bit of encouragement from all these people down here that are watching you. Yeah, they're pretty quiet. They are, I reckon they're a river. I'm talking to Stephen, and he can see you all down here, but he said they're very quiet. Why aren't they cheering me on? Yeah. How's that, Stephen? Not bad, not bad. Thank you. What's wrong? What's the matter? Stephen? What's wrong? Is everything all right? There, this wind's blowing a gale. You're nearly there. You are so, so close. You are so close. You can Keep Stephen going, talk, Steve. Just the last few yeah. metres to go. So, Stephen? Yeah? Is marrying me the Not biggest me. risk of your life yeah. now? Not anymore. Thank you. It's a walk in the park. Thank you. Now do you feel like you're swaying around? Yeah. Very pretty sight from here. Up here, it's magic. How many more? Two more. Can you hear the crowd? Yeah. You did it! You made it to the top. Unbelievable. The tallest flagpole in the Southern Hemisphere, and you're the man at the top of it. That's just the best feeling. What's it look like? Ah. Oh. Oh, I can see everything. <laughs> Ah, uh, this thing's moving all over the place. Is it? Do you yeah. want to start coming down now? Yeah. OK, he's coming down. I don't think I could have done it. How's the climb down? Going up's impossible. Coming down's easy. It took Steve another half an hour to get back down and over to Cassandra and Tanya. But he was one happy man when he arrived. You are the man of the moment. <laughs> Way to go. You're climbing, the flagpole's swinging. Oh, yeah. What were you feeling? You were just clinging on. Yeah, just hanging on, hoping they'd stay up there. Hoping they'd get to the top. It was good. Did you think you had it in you? Not really, no. Someone wants a hug. <laughs> Blake's been hearing your voice, but he couldn't work out why you upset. weren't there. Good boy. For a man that said the biggest day was getting married, how did we compete with that one? Ah, uh, marriage would be easy. You think? <laughs> Well, Stephen, how's this for a honeymoon? You and Cassandra are off for a seven-day scenic southern tour of New Zealand, courtesy of Kentucky Holidays, Bonus Airways and Harvey World Travel. You'll explore spectacular national parks and lakes and cruise the Milford Sound. 
You won't have to climb a mast to see all the sights, but there'll be heaps of adrenaline pumping activity for you and Cassandra to have a go at in Queenstown. Mate, this fantastic holiday is yours, thanks to Contiki Holidays, Qantas Airways and Harvey World Travel, the travel professionals. Well, that's it for another year, and it has been a fantastic series. We hope you've enjoyed all the dares because we've certainly enjoyed bringing them to you. A big thank you to our friends and the legends at Harvey World Travel for all of the holidays. And just before you go, if you're the sort of person who scares easily, well, you better close your eyes now because here's a frightening look at all of those people who dared and won this year. Who dares wins? Tonight, see Home Improvement's Tim Allen as you've never seen him before. The Santa Claus premieres 8.30 tonight. Next up, all-time greatest wedding bloopers. show every week. See? Never misses. I knew I was a legend. <laughs>